Afternoon everybody. Yes, it is actually the next day. I did actually drive back down to the South Farm even though I wasn't sure I was going to. Uh, it was drizzling, kind of a light rain up there, up north. So I'm like, you know what, I need to take this opportunity to get back uh, down south here. We actually are back down south right now. Um, and it's nice. The guys are still seeding. Uh, I'm not going to go hop on a drill. Uh, my job here is to make sure the crops are growing and looking how they should. I want to do a crop tour with you guys. So right now we're on some, uh, this was seeded to chickpeas. Um, we haven't grown chickpeas in a couple years. And I don't know why we keep growing them, but anyways we do and we're back. So the chickpeas are nicely coming out of the ground. Uh, there's still some more underneath the ground. You can, you can see that they're just nicely growing here. So I wanted to check them for uh, disease. Let's see here if we can find a plant. See if the sun will work with us here a little bit. Some, there's some dirt on that. I'm gonna blow it a stuff. Okay. So these look really good. See the little hairs on them? A little bit of dirt still on there. But, um, I don't expect any disease yet at this stage, but they are a chickpea and they're highly, highly, like on a scale of one to 10, they're a 15 and can get astakaida. Ouch, mosquito. So, uh, though they are uh, nicely out of the ground, they are susceptible basically as soon as those puppies emerge. Yes, they are seed treated. Um, that's for so uh, soil borne. Astakaida is uh, more airborne. So, uh, I think it's still in your soil as well, but uh, because if you didn't grow chickpeas on a particular piece of property ever in the history of that property's life, you would have less disease pressure, but you would still have disease versus if you grew them on uh, ground that you have had disease pressure on. Just so you know, there is a four year strict four year rotation for chickpeas due to the disease. This ground, uh... boy, I think it might have actually been over four years to be honest with you. Anyways, we're looking for weeds, though there's really not much at this stage of the game that you can do with weeds. Okay, you can barely even tell where the chickpea rows are, all right? They're just nicely popping out of the ground. Like this guy here, just nicely poking out. Uh, I'm sure there's some more. I'm a little, it's a little thinner. I don't know where the rest of our chickpeas are here, but uh, not there. So chickpeas, they're okay if you seed them a little bit on the lighter side because they're kind of like canola. They're just going to get really thick, bushy, and they're going to grow wider and expand. Lentils won't do that. Lentils, you need to sock them to it because they're not going to do that. They're basically going to shoot up one stem and that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a few pods on there and that's it. Chickpeas are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. You could have one gigantic chickpea plant if there was no competition loaded up with pods. The problem is, problem is that chickpeas are a non-determinate crop. You've heard me say that before. So uh, if they don't have much pressure uh, or I should say competition, and if you have a really wet summer and fall, they just won't come in. Hence, they will freeze and you will harvest nothing. Best case scenario, harvest feed. Maybe that's still nothing. Depends how you look at it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, for weeds, as I was saying, there's really not much you can do. You cannot spray chickpeas for a broadleaf. Not really. You can knock out a few little stinkers, some stink weeds, something like um, small and easy to kill. But our big weed down here is kochia. And I'm sure I could find some kochia here if I looked hard enough. We do use um, residual chemicals in, with our burn off for kochia. And it is, I think it's authority. And it's dynamite on kochia. It works really, really well. But uh, you need about, I think you need like a half inch of rain just to take it down and sometimes that's hard to get down at the south farm now we have been getting it hence we got some green grass there in the ditch so it's pretty op we're pretty optimistic this year i'm sure i can find some kosher if i can't then i'm really excited but i'm sure i can i'll point one out but grassies you can easily spray out 
such as your volunteer cereals, because this was seeded into a wheat stubble, uh, foxtail, uh, your, if you have downy or Japanese brome, we pretty much got that eradicated, your uh, wild oats, your uh, um, millet if you have any, we don't have any of that, darnell if you have any, we don't have any of that, uh, wild oats, we've got very little of those, uh, but anyways, We'll do more chickpea stuff when chickpeas actually come out of the ground and we can show you some disease and hopefully we don't find disease for a little while. So anyway, let's go and hop back in the truck and uh, we'll go find some cereal. All right, here's some wheat. Bentley's out roaming around. He's hanging out with me today. So I'm thinking we're gonna have to start crop spraying here pretty dang quick. Look at all these old kosher carcasses, eh? This is from last year. This was lentils. We seeded this wheat into lentil stubble. And uh, it was a disaster, this field last year. We did everything right according to the chemical, but it was hot and dry and our lentils did absolutely nothing. You guys know that our lentils yielded all of 0.8 of a bushel. Didn't even get our seed back. But you know what? Russian thistle and kosher, they love hot and dry. Love it. And they did awesome. It just came solid kosher and Russian thistle because it had zero competition. Sad deal, but hopefully that bad drought is behind us. We've been getting a little bit more rain this year. Nothing crazy. Like that slough down there, I'll zoom in. Like that should have water in it. It's not much of a slough, but it wasn't seeded. It was muddy this spring. It should have some water in it. It doesn't. It's a little drier than I was hoping it would be at this time this year. Bentley, come back. Um, but here's hoping. So anyways, this is wheat. Let's see if we can get to a nice straight row here. We seeded our wheat first. And we're looking for about a three to four leaf. So this is a three leafer. We got, or let me zoom in here a little bit here, on this plant. So this is one plant, one leaf, two, three. And this fourth one is coming here but so we are solid three leaf so this is about ready to start uh, spraying for broadleaf and grassy control we will do both on our wheat because it was seeded early I'm sure I can find some kosher out here we did do residual control on wheat as well using authority to help with the kosher we knew that this was going to be a problem this year some of this lentil stubble for kosher control let me find some over here to these old carcasses. Hey, Bentley, you coming back here? Whoa, wrong button. Sorry about that, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Let's pull this old carcass back here. This is Kosha. Kosha is very hairy. See the hairs on it? Very difficult to kill when it's small. It's actually not that hard to kill when it's the size like this big. But to try to get good coverage on all these little wee guys, that's the problem. So you want to use lots of water and uh, the right herbicides. Anyways, this is looking pretty good. Happy with it so far. It's exactly the stage that I thought it would be in. I thought it'd be two to three leaf by now. It's gonna be three to four pretty quick, especially since it's hot and humid. So we're gonna have to pull some sprayers off of burn off and we're gonna have to put them on crop spraying. Mike, do you typically have to crop spray while do burn off? Shouldn't you be done seeding by now? Actually, no. No, we would not be done. Typically, we would try and be done seeding by this time, yes. On May 26th, which is uh, my older brother's birthday, we always typically aim to be done right around that end of May, but we started quite a bit later this year. Not a lot later but at least a week later so we're gonna go into June a little bit for sure um, and regarding do you normally crop spray while you're still seeding yes that's very common you're always doing that because the first stuff that you seeded is well advanced and you need to start crop spraying putting your herbicides on uh, before it stages out Mike what do you mean stages out well once this stuff gets too big uh, then it gets too big to spray and uh, not so much because of the weeds you're trying to kill because there's you know not a lot of weed pressure here as you can clearly see but uh, 
the more advanced that your crop gets, the more of a smackdown you're going to do to it, okay? We'll talk about chemicals another time. You guys, it's not very popular chemicals in spraying and stuff, so I don't really talk of that much about it. You guys typically like the seed and harvesting videos, and there's not very many seeding videos because we're seeding at the same time. Typically, uh, I got two months worth of seeding videos because I seed here and there. This year, I'm only seeding north, and uh, so you're missing everything down south. So it's not gonna be nearly as many seeding videos. Anyways, crop looks good. You guys got it figured. I'll let you go. Sorry about the wind. Southwest Saskatchewan after all. And uh, we'll do more crop updates and videos as they come. Mike, how long are you going to be down at the South Farm Farm? Great question. I'll be here for the probably the weekend. I'll go back north Monday, I would think. Finish seeding. I don't got very much left to do up there. How much you got left to do down here? Great question to give you a little bit of an update on that. I believe they only have a week left. Ah, probably only five days. So, ready to go, Bentley? Look at all these dandelions. Hop in. Watch your tail. All right, guys. Catch you later. See you on the flipper. Oh, we're back. I wanted to show you the brown mustard. So, I know this is pretty brown. Doesn't even look like there's anything coming. But there is. There is. Look at that. Just poking through. Remember, it looks like canola. It's uh, it's not canola. It is brown mustard, but still part of the brassica family. See the little rose. So, this is one of the stages where they're very susceptible to uh, flea beetles. And yes, we have flea beetles down here. Now, all this stuff has been treated with an insecticide, so that way. Uh, it would uh, kill the flea beetle or at least make him drunk and maybe he'll stop eating. But um, to prevent these little guys from getting chewed off. So yeah, I don't see anything chewing on them. We do have some grasshoppers. I've, or I should, I should re-clarify. I have heard that there's grasshoppers uh, in the area because we had bad hoppers last year like really bad like stripping the bark off of trees practically and fence posts I don't even make that up um, Obviously the insecticide that we put on the mustard would not do anything to grasshoppers They're too big But I don't see any hoppers around here jumping around which is good at a little bit of a later cool spring I'm hoping that helped a little bit, but I'm also a little bit concerned about it at the same time. You can see the little, oh, Ashton's trying to call me. Hold Sorry about that. I had to take that call. So anyways, good news is, is there's no chewing going on. There's no little bite marks, leaves chewed off. They look healthy. That's awesome. So guys, this is the very early stages of crop checking. Obviously, the chickpeas were just nicely popping up. Uh, the mustard's just nicely coming out of the ground. Our wheat is two to three leaf. Very early stages. So this is... One of the reasons why you want to come out here and evaluate to make sure there's any damage. Make sure you don't have to reseed. Farmers really only want to seed once, not twice. But everyone keeps enough seed in their bins to seed twice in case they have to. Fertilizer, no, but there's enough seed, there's enough seed to keep seeding because there's sometimes oopses can happen. You'll be driving along and you'll be like, huh, I wonder why that looks so brown and not green out there as you're driving by at 80 kilometers. So then you turn around and you do the drive-by test again. You even speed up. You're like, mm -mm you're like nope there's something wrong out there and you do a little drive around you go floating over the hills and you realize that the drill forgot a chunk or maybe the there's a lid left open and it, uh, if, it, if there's a lid left over on your air drill that's going to uh, uh, cause a lot of seeding issues mostly it's going to go down at a super light rate ask me how I know and uh, maybe you intended on seeding two bushel of whatever you were seeding and it only went out at a quarter bushel and you have to go out there and put some more seed in the ground so reseeding does happen, or frost. Hard frost can come in the spring and cook a lot of those little uh, uh, small crops. Some are more sensitive than others, and you gotta go back out and reseed again. A lot of canola. That's how you cook a lot of canola. Anyways, so you want to drive and you want to look at every single field. Not necessarily, you know, whether that's been chewed on or not. Though it's probably a good idea. But you want to make sure there's no oopses. And actually make sure every field's been seeded. <laughs> Long story. Adios!